than any other states in the United States with regards to development. And so uh, all you need to do, I'm just talking about from experience, you have to be careful citing any kind of case law in California because they have different enabling legislation. It's just a different animal, huh? Yeah, it's a different animal. I think some of our Supreme Court cases, though. Yeah. Frank, actually, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright said all the medical <coughs> in California. But, uh, he's a good question. He's a good question. Hey, now where you came from, Tom? Uh, yeah, actually, I, <laughs> I grew up here and I lived there for a while. And that's why I have this shirt on. Because I continue to roll back. Um, there's a couple of items that I wanted to address and talk to you about just for a few minutes as you think about the topic of multifamily. Um, it's very difficult to deal with the idea of what represents beauty. And it, you know, everybody has a different image of that, what that constitutes. And in this particular case, because not all of you can see what I'm talking about, I'm going to draw these little diagrams real quick on the, on the wall. But basically, what I want to address with you is the overall context for a project. And by that, as a diagram, I'm going to use this as a built environment, and this as a street. Uh, too often, the codes and the zoning looks at projects like this. In other words, our site plan and design review process is looking at these as individual items, not holistically. And as Scott and anybody in the planning industry uh, can relate to you, the preferred method is to look at it in a holistic manner and to look at entire quarters. And so one of the things that I'm going to try and address is how can you improve the overall vision of the community? Because in my opinion, whether it was the multifamily project out there on Adams Dairy, it could have just as easily been an ugly industrial building, office building, or anything, and we all would have been upset or disappointed. So uh, the fact of the matter is, the same McDonald's here looks a lot better in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's the same McDonald's. It's the same building. But it's the context that that McDonald's exists in. Uh, I took a ski trip to Steamboat Springs, and 40 Highway runs through Steamboat Springs. Steamboat Springs looks better than Blue Springs, and it's the same highway. And why is it? It's because Steamboat Springs has a quarter plan related to 40 Highway. And let me explain the, the benefits of that. If you go to this second page, you're seeing a little diagram here. And in that diagram, Ooh. I didn't use the wrong pen. I know I tried the other one, but we've had a spray sometimes. Okay, I'll, I'll just use this little diagram for your purposes. Uh, what we're talking about when you're looking at quarters, we're talking about a quarter design that deals with the primary arterial streets within the community. Here would be 40 Highway, Adams Bay Parkway, which is Chapel 7 Highway, Wyatt Road, Major Road. Uh, Duncan Road, where you're trying to make sure within the public sector and the public domain that you have a plan for that road. Now right now we have, we're beginning to develop in the community a hodgepodge of landscaping plans uh, for the different projects that are being developed. You look at Golden Corral, you have one kind of landscaping plan. You look at the project just to the south of it, it's entirely different. You go to the next project down, all within 200 feet, and not one of those projects is consistently landscaped. And so, you know, what's happening and will happen on Amsterdam um, Parkway and other locations is that we're going to have this domain of inconsistency. And so, what we're talking about is we want to go to this versus this. Um, related to that, in the packet that I've given you, there is actually a couple of cities that have actually done this. Uh, if I can borrow one of these real quickly. Um, back here in the back, Burlington, Vermont, actually created their own plan, an action plan for all of the streets and, and major quarters. And then at the back of that little diagram, it looks like this, built environment. They actually have a sheet that deals with an action plan for the municipality to how to deal with that entire environment. Uh, and how to make those improvements to the public quarters. 
behind that, there's a little document here uh, from I think it's City of Winter Springs, Florida, where it talks about form-based codes. And it talks about the benefit of a form-based code for those public quarters. You know, it focuses on less on the use, more on the form. You're using diagrams that people can understand. You're specifying building masses, heights, colors, locations of trees, setbacks, etc. I don't mean to pick on the project, but for example, we have a building that sits just a few feet off the road on Coronado now in front of Walmart that is way up close to the road up north on Seventh Highway. We have the, I believe it's a, a Lube Center or something that's also right out on Seventh Highway. The point is that there's no consistency in setback being uh, respected in these situations. The next document in here is a technical report that's actually for a highway corridor where they're actually using a form-based code for the whole highway corridor. And so they're demonstrating how uh, you can use it. They go through the whole discussion of what a form-based code is. Uh, and then they're going through the whole justification to publicly move in that direction. The, the codes, and, and I don't mean to take anything away from the good work you've done so far, but the whole industry is moving from zoning to form-based codes. And the difference is that, you know, historically zoning wasn't set up to deal with the issue of quality. Zoning was set up to deal with the health issue. It was an evolution out of the European days, and it was really set up to prevent tuberculosis and the communication of diseases from home to home. That's where a lot of the planning came from. And if you look at Rotterdam, it was rebuilt after World War II. Rotterdam doesn't look like Amsterdam. And it was because of the fear at that time over tuberculosis and other communicable diseases. Well, since then, our fear of those things has subsided because we gain control of those diseases, but that's the historical base. <coughs> so what you have is you have a code, you have setbacks, you have front yard setbacks, you have size a lot, you have all this information. None of that information has anything to do with quality of the project whatsoever. None whatsoever. And that's the difference between a form-based code is it starts moving in that direction. Now, you don't want to, as a city, expend the money and the effort to create that kind of a code for the entire town but you do need to concentrate on certain corridors that are important to the entire community. We have downtown, which is like a form-based yes, code. Yes, it is. That's correct. That's correct. And that's an example of a form-based code here locally. Uh, looking at the advantages and the, and the things that can be done on the education side, and I'm on this page here, on the public side, the other document that I provided you is from Mark, Mid-American Mid Regional Council. Mark it has taken it upon themselves to try and improve the quality of the built environment in the 20 metropolitan communities. Uh, this is just a little bit of the information I printed off, but if you look back here, there are courses for planning commission members. Uh, there's probably 15 in June, another 10 or 12 in July. These are free classes. Uh, they go on throughout the entire year. There's course descriptions. This one was for planning and zoning commissioner workshops. There was one in April and May. Uh, there's registration information. Seth usually shares that. I don't know. I was a planning commissioner. Probably Mr. Allen can address it, but I know I attended many yeah. of those workshops. And right. they usually you give a handout to the planning commissioners, letting them then letting them know what classes are available. And right. They're very interesting and very helpful. But there will there will be some classes I'm sure that deal with this concept of dealing with quarters, dealing with form based codes. Mark would love to come in and work on this type of thing. It's not just, this is not just an issue for Blue Springs. It's an issue for Kansas City Metropolitan Wine. Uh, the second thing that I'm trying to promote, uh, we think that focusing on individual projects is not going to get you the results you want. That it's much more beneficial to dealing with broad quarters and establishing design guidelines for those broad quarters. An example is Adams Dairy Parkway. What is the landscaping plan between Home Depot, Red, Walmart, uh, the new project that was announced in the newspaper the other night, the multifamily project to the south of that, Dervet? How is that consistently going to be developed and landscaped together? There is no plan. There is no guidance. The only point that's common to all those projects is the municipality 
terms of giving that guidance. Um,